welcome to the pomegranate girl a new knitting and fiber and sewing related podcast slash creativity journal um as you can tell i'm quite nervous um i'm not very good at this kind of thing um but i have wanted to enter into the world and the community of knitting and fiber podcasting for quite a long time and i finally tried to summon the courage <laughs> um so yes my name is ang harrod um most people call me annie unless you're my family um it's welsh in case you're wondering um i'm half welsh um i currently live in bristol in the southwest of england which is where i'm coming to you from today um and i've lived here for the past couple of years and yeah i thought i would join this lovely community um so we'll see if this makes it onto the internet i am drinking a ginger chai tea that i bought yesterday um i always quite like knowing what people are drinking um especially i'm a bit of a tea fanatic um my whole family pretty much survive on tea so yeah um and it's in this this isn't a nice hand thrown mug this is a still lovely mug um it says with a photo of the queen on it and it says i eat swans um it's from a bristol based company called stokescroft china um i'd just like to say i don't hate the queen i just think this is quite funny i found it in a charity shop and i just think it's really funny um so that's a good introduction to my sense of humour and I've got this with some oat milk and it's really nice and very warming and I love ginger and I love chai so what can what's a better combination anyway let's get on to why we're here um I am going to be talking to you about some knitting I've got a few finished objects I've got a lot of whips and I've also got some sewing to talk about um but I will do that in sections so if you're only interested in sewing or only interested in knitting then you can watch either and then I'm also going to talk a bit about books towards the end um I'm aware that probably not everyone's interested in that so I might if I ever get to do this again I might lose that section um but I always quite enjoy lis reading listening watching people talk about books um my undergrad degree was in literature so i am a big reader although i don't have as much time as i used to so i quite enjoy reading and hearing about what other people are reading and their recommendations so yeah just a bit about me before we start um i'm 24 yeah as i said i live in bristol um and i grew up in yorkshire and south wales so although i don't have an accent from either of those places um <laughs> I just have a very boring British accent um but yeah and I began knitting properly as in seriously uh for the first time last year so I've always been able to knit I remember one of my grandmas teaching me as a kid um probably when I was about six or seven and I think I knit a scarf for one of my teddy bears <laughs> which is a very quick project um don't think that still exists um so i was taught to knit then and i knitted on and off as a teenager um i knit a blanket which has now been acquisitioned by my cat um and that took me about five years um so i didn't really seriously start knitting until maybe my last year of university so three or four years ago now um and yeah and I just was still knitting really basic things like jumpers that you had to seam up that were made up of like four rectangles that kind of vibe um things that I would definitely not really wear now um but last Christmas I decided that I wanted to learn how to knit socks so I began the journey of knitting properly I really got into like Ravelry and knitting podcasts and have kind of been pretty committed ever since um and I taught myself to sew again at quite an early age um all my family are quite creative and especially my mum's side of the family are all pretty uh you know quite hands-on they 
um yeah it was mainly my aunt and my grandma who taught me to sew and I like really started doing serious dressmaking <laughs> serious it's not serious I started doing dressmaking last year um during lockdown um and yeah and just was using my mum's old machine and yeah just taught myself how to sew so actually should probably have said what I'm wearing this is the a top I don't really wear very often it is the McCall's M7969 and I rarely use big four patterns um but this one was really doing the rounds on Instagram um and still is and it is just this is the pattern I've actually got it here um so I made view A but shortened into a top so I just cut the skirt to like a peplum length on me and I made the size XL I think um but it is just far too big for me I didn't read the finish I made a bit of a rookie error I didn't read the finished garment me measurements and it's probably got about 30 centimeters of positive ease you can't really see here um but there's just a lot of extra room and it's also quite gapy at the front and quite um low for my personal preferences so I don't really wear it very often and I could take it in um but I French seamed this whole garment and um for those of you who don't know a French seam is a seam that's sewn twice um so you enclose the raw edges and it's just a faff to unpick and this also had loads of hand sewing in it I hand sewed the entire binding on the neckline and also on the binding on the sleeves so it's just a lot of unpicking to do and I just feel a bit lazy about doing it and for the meantime I'm quite happy to just wear it as a very oversized garment I just don't wear it very much and it is made from this lovely linen from Merchant and Mills I can't remember the name of the linen off the top of my head but I will pop it down below in the description um so yeah that's what I'm wearing and let's get started on the knitting so this is mostly going to be a knitting podcast hopefully um and with a bit of sewing thrown in and yeah maybe just other kind of creative things that I get up to and yeah, hopefully some footage of the outdoors and being in nature which is one of my favourite places to be when it's not raining which is it quite often is <laughs> um in this part of the world so first up I have got some socks and I popped them on some sock blockers but I have worn them already um so I hope you don't mind and these are just some really easy simple vanilla socks that are already fuzzing um they're three by one rib and they are knit out of life in the long grass fine sock which i think is a 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon mix and it's in the color hillside and i yeah i just used kind of i knit enough socks by this point that i kind of just make it up as i go along um and I don't normally knit with superwash merino. I pref I just kind of prefer the feeling of um, like untreated wool and I don't really like having nylon or acrylic in my yarns, but I really, really love this color. It's just this beautiful green with like hints of brown and it really is, just really does remind me of like nature and hills and mountains. And I thought I'd, all the socks that I'd knitted so far had either been um, like a fully wool with no nylon, no superwash treatment, or the fibre company's Amble, which has recycled nylon, and the fibre company's version of superwash, which is called Easy Wash, um, which is supposed to be less environmentally damaging. Um, so I'd only really used those two sock yarns, and so I was intrigued to kind of try something um, that was more of a standard like traditional sock yarn um and yeah this is what i created um i've only worn them i think twice so far and they've actually worn pretty well um there hasn't really been i wear my socks in shoes and in my boots i wear dms most of the time um i'm pretty hard wearing on my socks i kind of just want to wear them i'm not really one of these people that make socks and only wants to keep them in the house like I do want to wear them if I put so much time into knitting them um but I wash everything by hand even if it's super wash treated because yeah although I wear them quite hard I want to look after them so yeah I'm what else 
else do I have to say about these? I just did the, I do like a garter edge on my heel flap to make it slightly easier to pick up. That was something I learned from the Gentle Knitter podcast, Nicole, who I'm sure you all know. I love her podcast. And yeah, I just did a three by one rib and then like plain stocking out on the bottom of the foot. Um, yeah, and they're wearing really well. I have to say, I don't like the feel of them as much on my feet as my like pure wool socks. Um, I'm not sure if that's just all in my head or if it's an actual thing, but I, yeah, I'm interested to see how they wear and I just do love the colour. I think it's so beautiful. So yeah, these are finished object number one. And I kind of just did these when I was watching TV or if I was with family or when I was travelling. Um, so I wasn't really knitting on them consistently, so they took me a bit of time, but I quite like having something like that when I'm in the car or on the train or on the bus to work or something. Um, so yeah, finished those. The other finished objects is something I actually don't have with me because it was a gift knit for one of my best friends for her birthday, and it was the September hat by Petite Knit. I'll see if I can magic up a picture and put it here. And it's funny because I started this when I first like got into knitting more seriously I tried to knit this hat and it is if you don't know it it is knitted in the round in brioche and I just could not wrap my head around brioche knitting I really got stuck I could do brioche flat but going into like knitting brioche in the round somehow confused me so much that I just kind of gave up and I actually knit another hat um for myself and that was a lot more simple for me at the time so I thought a year had gone past I've done a lot more knitting I would try and knit it again for my friend um because it just seemed like a nice way to do brioche and see if I could master it and this time I actually could and that was just really nice for me to be able to have tried something again that I really struggled with like a year ago and found it pretty simple um so I knit it out of this is my swatch, by the way, which I have kept. You can't really see it. So this is knit out of a strand of four ply and then two strands of silk mohair. Um, and I just really liked this colour. I think it's so beautiful. It's not really showing up very well, but it's like a really nice lilac. And I've got, I've got the yarn with me. So this is Sunday, uh, the Petite Knit Sunday by Sadna, is it Sadden Sun? sun has gone i hope i'm pronouncing that right and their tin silk mohair and i bought these from one of my local knitting shops and um, she's online at the moment but she is opening a physical shop in i think really soon and it's no frills knitting um she's wonderful she does free delivery in bristol which i love um and it's all by hand which is really lovely and the color is four six three one for this one and 4631 for this one as well. I can't remember what the actual shade names are, um, but I'll pop the link down below. And they just knitted together really nicely and it was really nice to knit something for a friend. I kind of guessed on her size, just did something that would fit me. And it's something, yeah, it was just really quick and easy. Didn't take me very long. Again, I did, it's the kind of thing that you could knit while traveling. So I took it with me on a trip to London. And yeah, it was just a lovely project. And I would definitely like to knit one for myself um, for the winter months because I don't really have many hats and it'd be nice to have some more. So yeah, that's it for finished objects. And let's move on to the works in progress. So the first one I have is a bit of a Bahamas, Bahamas, Bahamas. God, can you tell I did English for my degree? Um, project. I started this in August and it's actually a gift knit for my mum. And this isn't a surprise. She knows she's getting this. Um, she's seen me knit it. And it is the Talvinin jumper by Caitlin Hunter. Um, I have not prepared very well and I haven't really put this on any cables. Um, but it is this beautiful colourwork yoke jumper. Um so it's got these like really beautiful birds all along the yoke and then it's also gosh i really have not prepared well it's got this color work on the bottom as well i'll maybe insert some pictures um and yeah 
I am knitting the size four in this. Um, well, I'm actually knitting the size six to get a size four. So I found this with Caitlin Hunter patterns. Um, I'd knit one of her jumpers designs before. I knit the Jupiter crop earlier this year for myself. And I really found that I couldn't get gauge um, unless it was with a much bigger needle size. And then the gauge was like, the fabric was very loose and it wasn't really what I wanted. So usually I would knit. I did some, did some research and did some calculations and I, I kind of looked at the percentage. <laughs> it was all, uh, maths was never my strongest suit. So this was all a bit complicated. So we'll see if it works out. I used the percentage I've looked at my gauge, saw how many stitches I was getting per 10 centimetres and did some calculations based on that. So I'm knitting a size six, but should be getting a size slightly smaller than the size four, which is the size that my mum wanted. Um, she wanted quite a lot of extra positive ease, so I would have really knit her the size three, but she wanted a size bigger because she wanted to have lots of room underneath. Um, so this is knit out of Biche a Bouche, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, they are, let's see if I've got the yarn label with me. Um, of course I don't. Oh no, I do. Here they are. Yeah, they're Le Petit Lambs wool and it is in the colour dark green grey and that's like the main colour, this beautiful like khaki green and the other colours are, ooh. the orange is soft orange brown, so this lovely like kind of orange, true orange um, here and then that's also on the bottom of the jumper as well towards the hem and then the this cream colour is just called beige and yeah it's just really beautiful um yeah just taking me a really long time basically um the section of just stockinette was probably what took me the longest i find color work quite addictive so i always want to be knitting on it um but the yeah the stockinette section just was taking me ages but that's finally over and yeah, I'm now working on the colour work section on the bottom. So I've just reached the bobbles. And the bobbles I did with an Andrea Maori technique. Because when I've knitted bobbles before, I did a different technique and I didn't really like how they looked. So yeah, I'll link that technique that I used before. Um, but I much prefer how these look. And then I have started knitting one of the sleeves. So the modifications I made, obviously I've done a different size to... Um, because my gauge was so different and I've also shortened it quite substantially so my mum wanted this um, a lot shorter than in the pictures so she told me the length she wanted and then I just subtracted that from the amount of stockinette you do in the body um, but I've kept the colour work charts exactly the same and I think the balance will be okay it's still quite a large gap and I've also omitted the shaping that you do in the body um, my mum just wanted this kind of straight fit but I am doing the shaping in the sleeves. Um, so I've just, you do start using different size needles. Um, and yeah, it's, I'm really, really enjoying knitting this. I think it is such a beautiful design. Um, I chose this because my mum is, really loves nature and she really loves birds. Um, she's always been like a keen, um, especially as since I've been older, she's really interested in birds and it's like, um, she knows a lot of like different bird species and so sometimes it's a nice memory for us of like being in the kitchen and my mum telling me what birds were in our garden and going to the bird feeders so yeah this is just a beautiful design and my grandma so her mum was a really keen bird watcher and yeah was really really into bird watching she went on like bird watching walks with like a group um and was very much into it so I I think it just really reminds my mum of that as well um and yeah I just think this is so beautiful I would love to knit one for myself but I just can't see myself knitting one again in the near future just because it's a lot of work this is um a fingering weight yarn and I kind of underestimated how long this would all take me I've only really knitted jumpers in like a DK or an Aran weight before so 
or even I knitted the Jupiter crop in Vovo by Rose Little Moore and that is sport weight so even that and that's also quite cropped and short sleeves so it really didn't take me that long whereas this is taking a lot longer but it is so worth it and this is going to be my mum's Christmas gift so yeah she knows all about this she's tried it on um she chose the colours herself kind of with a little bit of assistance from me and yeah so it's not a surprise so I can share it on the podcast but yeah I'm really hoping she loves this when it's finished and hopefully she'll get to keep it for many many years to come um and yeah I'm just really enjoying working on it I just think I don't know I can keep rambling on about this all day I think it's beautiful I'm just really enjoying it so that is whip number one hopefully I'll have progressed on that a bit more the next time I speak to you um the second whip is actually one I'm not currently working on but I thought I'd show you because it's so sweet and I was watching a podcast this morning which I can't remember the name of but I'll link below and she'd actually made the same item and it is <laughs> it's this the Dorati um looking slightly bedraggled um so this is the ratty pattern by Claire Garland and it she does lots of really beautiful like quite whimsical toy stuffed animal patterns um and she did a wind in the willows series and i loved wind in the willows growing up and i actually read the book for the first time really recently and i kind of and i saw someone else talking about her patterns and i was like oh i need to knit that so yeah here we go so this is ratty as you can see i've knit the body and i've knit one of his ears um he does look not quite how he's supposed to i don't think i seamed him up properly um but he's okay once he's got he so the pattern also comes with like a jumper and some trousers um written so once I think those are on, I think can look a lot better and not quite so misshapen. But I really enjoyed making this and I actually stuffed him using real sheep's fleece, uh, like wool, um, which I think is really nice. I wanted to keep it as natural as possible. And this is just knitted out of, I think it's a selection of drops yarn, which I wouldn't normally knit with, but I just kind of wanted to keep it quite an affordable project. Um, and yeah. So I just can use exactly the same as the pattern suggested and I will list all of those below because it's quite a lot of different yarns. But yeah, I'm not going currently knitting on him, but I was, this podcast I watched this morning, she was talking about it. So I thought, oh, I've got to show him. He's so sweet and I do want to finish him this year. Um, not really making this for anyone. I'm just making it for myself um, as an, a grown adult because I just think it's so sweet. Um, but maybe if I some of my friends or family ha have children in the next however long I'll know that I can knit them some sweet toys um or for any children in my life really and yeah and then he's got these little plastic eyes as well um, but I just think he's so sweet and I've also knitted the trousers as well um so this is one leg of them I haven't seen them I've just knit them um so as you can see this is a very still got all the ends that I haven't woven in <laughs> so you just knit one trouser leg and then you seam it um together with the other one and it makes these little like jodhpur trousers that are probably going to be a bit long on him um I didn't bother gauge swatching for any of this because let's face it it's a toy I didn't really think it was necessary um but yeah it's really sweet so that's whip number two. Um, he's very quick to knit. Um, it's just that I've been focusing on other things. Um, and it, it requires quite a lot of concentration. You really need to be like reading the pattern. So it's not really mindless knitting. Um, so I haven't really had the mental like headspace to be just sitting down for a few hours and finishing him off. The I've got two more whips that I'm kind of actively working on now to show you. And they are both socks um I'm oh no I've got three I cast on another pair of socks last night so socks are really what got me in back into like knitting um I really like the idea of having like a fully handmade wardrobe and socks just seem like a nice challenge 
so I usually have a pair of like really basic uh, either ribbed or like vanilla socks on the needles just for something to knit like while I'm traveling whilst I'm watching tv if I haven't got a jumper or other project that's at like a simple stage so the first pair I've got are the lopper socks I think is how you pronounce it which is by Fibre Tails and this is what they look like so I have one finished sock um they have these really beautiful color work socks with um yeah this like I think it translates as the flea uh detail which is I believe Scandinavian and they're just yeah all over color work but like very simple and they have this like huh, I think it's the eye of partridge heel and they have a lateral braid at the top um and they're just really sweet and I really like them for some reason they kind of remind me of gingerbread houses um and I am knitting these out of a West Yorkshire spinners yarn um <laughs> saying that I didn't like superwash sock yarns with nylon in and now have this is the second pair that have got these in um yeah which is the colour I believe marzipan that's the white kind of base colour the dark brown is an Arvetta four ply and then the pink yarn is actually non superwash and it's um Mondine sock yarn which obviously is slightly different to the other two yarns but it's just the perfect colour I used colours that were very similar to the originals in the pattern because I really liked how that looked um, I've seen some other beautiful like colour combinations on Ravelry but I thought these were really nice so I have knit one sock and I have just I haven't worked on these in a little while but the I have just done the heel and I'm doing the gusset decreases on the second sock so these are going really quickly and these also look way smoother because I was knitting so the first pair I knit on magic loop on and I knit these on 2.75 mil needles um and yeah I knit them completely on magic loop whereas these ones I actually knit on one side even though even the lateral braid so the whole thing before I got to the heel I was doing on nine inch circulars which I much prefer I really when I first started sock knitting I knitted everything on magic loop but now I much prefer um if it's just a simple sock doing small circulars it just I don't know I find it goes way quicker um and I find I don't have to concentrate as much because I don't have to like pull faff around with like pulling out the needles and stuff so yeah and then obviously I switched to Magic Loop to do the heel and like the heel turn and then picking up the stitches for the gusset. Um, and now I'm doing the decreases. Once those are complete, I'll switch back to doing it on small circulars and then I'll switch back to Magic Loop for the toe. Um, but yeah, these were going really quickly because they're on 2.75 and I find colour work pretty addictive to knit. Um, so hopefully by the next time I'll have another pair of finished socks because I have been knitting these for like months I stopped working on them for a while and then I take them back up about a month ago and like complete finish the second sock in like less than a week and then cast this on and knit this really quickly so yeah once I'm when I'm working on these they go really quickly it's just actually having the energy to pick them up so that is sock whip number one Moving on to sock whip number two, which is also another long term sock project. And these are the Unity socks. Um, these are a pattern from 52 Weeks of Socks, which is a really popular book. You've probably heard of it. It's published by Liner magazine. Um, and it's yeah beautiful. It's got 52 sock patterns in it. It's pretty expensive, but they've actually just bought out a paperback version, which is a lot more affordable um and yeah this is the first pattern that I'm knitting from that book which I bought a while ago <laughs> um so this is my second attempt at these socks these yeah are the unity socks I can't remember the name of the designer but I will have it down below and the yarn is tuku wool um tuku sock I believe I think that's right and it's in the colorway russo um and it is so lovely to work with it is a 80 percent uh finish i think it's finished wool and 20 percent nylon 
and it's really nice it feels it's not super soft but it's still it still feels a bit rustic but it's not like it's not like lopy or something it's not super scratchy um and hopefully the nylon will give them like a real good um durability to them um but yeah they, so they are these like cabled socks so you can't see it very well when they're not on but when they're on i'll kind of stretch them out for you you can see this like really beautiful cable detail so the original um the first time i knit these i knit the first sock and started the second one and i was kind of in two minds about whether to rip back because they were a bit too small and they were wearable but they just felt a bit too tight they weren't quite long enough they were just a bit of a pain to get on and i was really indecisive about whether i should rip them back or not so i kind of left them for a few months and then i just decided i don't like i want to be able to wear them and it was worth it so i ripped them back and knit the larger size and now they're fine um so yeah this is the first sock um yeah again haven't knitted on this much recently um but yeah they will i know from how the first one went that I, once once i get into the flow i'll knit them really quickly um because these it's because the wool is slightly thicker there's slightly less stitches to make up for that and these are also knit on 2.75s um so yeah they go quicker than say knitting on my usual 2.25 and yeah they're just really lovely um and i'm looking forward to finishing them so oh, i need some tea Sorry if I'm talking really quickly. I'm very like self-conscious about <laughs> filming something like this. So I think I'm trying to rush through it so that it's over and done with, but um need to just slow down. So my final whip is actually a knitting whip, is one that I started last night, and it is these toe-up socks. So when I first started knitting socks, I learned how to knit them cuff down um, and that works really well for me. I really enjoy knitting um, like cuff down socks and I knit them with like a heel flap and a gusset and I have knit after four heel socks but I kind of prefer the heel flap and gusset for me. I think it fits my foot slightly better. Um, but I, what I really like about toe up socks is that you don't have any yarn waste at the end um, so you can just knit them as long as you've got yarn really um so i decided i bought some sock yarn from my favorite dyer which is um woolly mammoth fiber company she is based in northern ireland emma um she is really who inspired me to start knitting with more natural fibers um she's wonderful i love her podcast she hasn't done one for a while but she creates the most beautiful hand dyed yarns she really focuses on non superwash plastic free yarns um with real like traceability and uk fiber and also she dyes everything with natural dyes which i think is amazing and she gets the most beautiful colors um her yarn is very popular you do she does shop updates and you do kind of have to be there as soon as it goes live um but in her last update or the update before last um i hadn't purchased anything for her from her in a while because i didn't really need anything but she had these beautiful um colorways of natural sock which is her sock base which is a non no nylon um yeah no nylon no superwash yarn and it is 50% Chivia and 50% Blue Face Leicester. And I personally have found her, the socks that I've knit out of that yarn have lasted really well. They have felted um, on the heel, but I wear my socks really hard. I wear them in boots, as I said earlier. And I, yeah, because to me, they're made to be worn and I don't really mind them felting on the bottoms and on like the heels and on the toes. I just would rather wear them and get the use out of them and I just love how her yarn feels I think it's so warm and yeah I much prefer um this kind of yarn for socks just personally I haven't had to fix any of them um my first pair I made about a year ago and yeah haven't had to fix them at all which has been great um so yeah this is my first toe up socks so this is knit 
um, yeah, out of the natural stock in the colourway, I believe, hibernation. Um, and it's this really beautiful, like, lilac colour with, like, these hints of kind of mustardy green and darker purple. And it is just so beautiful. You can kind of see it a little bit more here. Um, so this pattern is the DRK Everyday Socks, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry of, the, of Drea Renee Knits. And this is her toe up sock pattern so yeah you cast on and do the toe and then you it's like a ribbed sock basically a two by two ribbed sock and yeah i'm really enjoying this first time knitting toe up and yeah i separated my skein into two 50 gram balls so that i can just knit and knit and knit and then when i've got a little bit of yarn left cast off so hopefully the wastage won't be too much i do keep all of my other skeins of yarn um like my small offcuts from socks because I think I could use them for like colour work socks or scrappy socks um but I just wanted to try something different and I really like that they're ribbed and I think they'll make really good gift knitting um I'm planning to make some socks for family members for Christmas so I won't say who in case they're watching but um I think this will be it's quite a good pattern because it tells you um like the measurements and stuff for what foot size they your whoever you're knitting them for has so i quite like that um so yeah i just started these last night and i have literally just started the ribbing you can see here um excuse this very dodgy cast on it was the first time doing the i think it's called the turkish cast on um yeah i'd never done it before so it looks a bit dodgy but once it's woven in it'll be fine um and yeah i'm just really enjoying them and they are I kind of cast those on to have another like mindless sock project that I can take because I'm going I've got some traveling in the next few months and um I do have some other vanilla socks on the needles but they are gift knitting so I can't always knit on them so I just thought I'd have something else um that I can knit all the time that was for me because I'm <laughs> at heart I am a bit of a selfish knitter um I know it looks like maybe I'm not but I just quite like knitting things for myself. I'm at that stage where I still don't really have many knitted garments, so I'm quite happy to keep knitting for myself. Um, so the last thing I've got in this kind of like knitting section is some acquisitions. I know not everyone likes these, so I'll be really quick. Um, but a few weeks ago I went to Bath, which is actually where my family live, um, although I now live in Bristol, as I mentioned, and I yeah I went back with a friend and we just went for the day and just had a bit of a wander around some of the shops and we went for lunch and I kind of had forgotten how busy Bath can be on a Saturday um but it was really nice to go back I don't often go back into the centre of town because it's busy on the weekends um especially now that Covid uh, restrictions have kind of eased in the UK um but it was a chance to go to this lovely shop called Yarn Story which is run by Carmen and her team and it's just a really beautiful yarn shop it's on Walcott Street which is full of lovely independent shops um in Bath and I have been there once before but I've ordered from them online for quite a few times and they is actually where I bought my first pair of chago needles when I started knitting properly last year when I started knitting socks and they were so helpful and I just really like it in there they carry a beautiful selection of yarn and I fancy going in and buying some stuff <laughs> um so I had kind of in mind what I was after so I bought I didn't buy loads because I don't really need much more yarn to be honest um I <laughs> don't knit as fast as I would wish so I don't really feel like I need yarn and I don't like buying yarn if I don't have a project in mind personally um it's just really personal preference for me but I did buy these two skeins of Pentland by Garvanor and I've been wanting to try Garvanor yarn oh god sorry there's a hair on it um for a while I really love their ethos they're based in Wales and this is their Pentland organic Romney lambs wool um they are uh, soil association certified i think they also have yeah the gots certification as well and this is yeah made from 100 percent single flock organic rumney lambs wool which is from wiltshire in england it's actually not far from where i am now and 
it's just really beautiful this is like a slightly i would say looser spun yarn than their other four ply which is i believe called priscelli and this is in the color tin and it's a four ply if i didn't mention um so i bought this with a specific project in mind and that is a pattern from this beautiful book it's about winter by emily foden i love emily foden's work um i love her yarn although i've never used it myself um it's slightly out of budget for me um and but it is absolutely beautiful and she used to use quite a lot of superwash yarn but they are beautiful colors and this is a gorgeous book i'm sure you've seen it it's published by pom pom and it was published i think in 2019 uh let's see Ooh. but yeah it's a really yeah june 2019 okay first published in 2018 my bad um it's the most beautiful book it's got these like tissue paper bits at the beginning and really beautiful photography let's get a good example um yeah just really beautiful photos and the patterns are obviously beautiful as well i do have the yarn to knit the soiree jumper i bought it got it as a gift from my parents for my birthday earlier this year but i just haven't had the time to knit it yet um, I was kind of saving it for the winter, so hopefully once I finish my Talvin in, I can start this jumper, um, which is beautiful. But I actually bought that yarn for the Persephone mittens, which are these beautiful mittens. Um, you can see them modelled here. Um, here's another photo. I just think they're gorgeous. They're very simple um but i really love them i think they look really lovely they've got this like detailing along here sorry i shouldn't be showing you the pattern <laughs> um and they are in the book she uses her viola romney full ply so i wanted something really similar so hence this so yeah 250 gram skeins should be enough and yeah hopefully you can cast these on later this year for when it gets colder I do have one pair of knitted mittens that I knitted from a woolen gang kit, I believe, um, a few years ago. But they are just not really wearing. I this is when I didn't know how to gauge swatch, and I didn't really understand uh, wool or fibre. So I've learnt a lot more now, and yeah, I'm hoping to make some really lovely mittens that I will use a lot. Um, although it never gets super chilly um, where I live because I live in the city. Um, but hopefully when I go home for Christmas, um, my mum lives slightly more rurally. Um, so yeah, going on nice walks and stuff and it'd be lovely to have these. And then I also bought, uh, my first copy of Making Stories magazine. Um, this is a really beautiful publication. I believe the team are based partially in Berlin, um, but it's all in English and I know this is issue number six so this is the most recent edition and I just bought this because I've been interested in the magazine for a while um they're quite focused on sustainability which I really love and I but this I hadn't really ever seen like I didn't feel like it, there were enough patterns per in each magazine that I would want to knit for me to kind of buy the whole magazine but this one has so many beautiful patterns in it so the there's I love all of the patterns in this um but I especially love uh Trop Ven, which is by Julia Exner and the yarn the original yarn in this sample is by Annabelle Williams who's a local to me natural dyer and this is just the most oh beautiful like colour work yoke with bubbles um jumper and the other one I love that is in here is called, let's find it. <laughs> this is when it takes me eight. Oh, here we go. The Ciro jumper, which is knit in Biche Bouche again. Um, but it's how it's the um, Petite Lambs wool and also the Silk Mohair as well. Um, so it's held together and it's just a really beautiful um kind of lace architectural yoke um there aren't any oh here we go um you, 
yeah I'd really recommend going and looking at the pattern online it's beautiful and yeah I would love to knit either of those and most of the patterns in this book you can see on the back here's them all piled up but yeah it's just a really lovely magazine it feels really nice it's just a nice read um so really glad I bought my first issue of this and I'm looking forward to making some bits from it so <laughs> that is all the knitting um for this week so if that's all you're here for um you're welcome to uh finish now and i'll hopefully see you again soon and thank you so much for watching but for those of you who are interested in the sewing i'm going to talk about that very briefly so as i said i learned to sew properly and like proper garments i could i've been able to sew for about 10 years um but i always just made things for like the house so like cushions and hot water bottle covers and like very simple things um so i learned dressmaking really last year and i'm completely self-taught um as i said um my aunt does say um but mostly i'm self-taught and just like use youtube basically and instagram and I am in the middle of sewing a orchid, orchard's dress, which is by um, a lovely designer called Vivian Sao Shen, I believe. I'm really sorry if I've got that wrong. Her brand name is, uh, pattern name is Vivian. And she designed the most, her latest, no, she's released another pattern since then. But one of her most recent patterns is the orchard's dress. And this is the bodice. And it's a very simple, um, le kind of simple kind of smock dress. Um, and I'm making view A, which has a skirt, and then it's got a tiered uh, ruffle at the bottom. And it's got this placket. So as you can see, this is the collar. And oh, yeah, I should probably say the label has got war uh, swear words on it. So if you don't like that kind of thing. Um, I'm sorry, um, but I use these beautiful labels um, by uh, Kylie and the Machine, which is Australian based company. And it just says hand fucking made. I just find that quite entertaining. I know it's not everyone's taste, but I quite enjoy that, especially in kind of contrast with this quite, say, cottagecore kind of dress. <laughs> I just kind of quite like that, um, that contrast. So, yeah, this is the bodice. I have done the skirt as well, but I just haven't attached it yet. It's got this really beautiful gathering here. Um, so it doesn't have any darts. It's just got gathers um, right in the front section and then also at the back. And I am making the size 14. Um, I would, I think my measurements actually put me in a size 16, but I looked at the garment, the finished garment measurements and I didn't want as much ease so I looked at one of my other favourite dresses which is the indigo dress by Tilly and the Buttons, I've got a few of them and I looked at the measurements on that and I measured it and I really like the fit of that, the bodice and it's kind of a similar fit and that it's like a loose bodice with like a gathered skirt, um, kind of smock style dress. So I looked at that and yeah made the size 14 based on that so yeah this is the bodice i have french themed everything on the bodice just because this fabric is 50 percent cotton and 50 percent linen and it's quite frayed as you can see from this raw edge at the bottom so i just thought it would be best to um french seam it i really like french seams i think they finish a garment really nicely um but also I don't own an overlocker so I quite like French seaming because I think it makes things more sturdy instead of just doing like a zigzag stitch on my machine. Um, so yeah and then the sleeves, the armholes even are finished with this bias binding and this fabric is from So Me Shun, So Me Shun, I can't speak today, So Me Sunshine which is a UK based, I think they're based near London. Um, fabric shop and they have this over the summer i don't know if they've got any left if they do i'll link it down below um and i just bought i think i bought three and a half meters and it's 150 centimeters wide and it was enough with maybe like 30 centimeters left over at the end to make the um yeah view a which has got an extra tear on the skirt so yeah really lovely i love this pattern i've seen so many gorgeous versions 
I've also got some other fabric. Um, I've got four meters of cotton that I bought a while ago, um, which was a really reasonable price. That's like a gingham cotton. And I'm planning on making the, if I like how this fits, I'm going to make another version of the orchid's dress, orchard's dress, but with the sleeves from, I'm not quite sure yet which sleeves I use, but I want to make puffy sleeves. I might use the ones from the Anna Allen Anthea blouse, which I have made. Um, because I'm not a massive fan of sleeveless things. I think for this it will be perfect because this is going to be a lovely summer dress and I can always wear a cardigan over it. But I do prefer having like sleeves on things. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm very aware this is not very seasonal um, given that it is... October, midway through October, but we've actually had some very unseasonal weather. It's been quite sunny and warm and I would just, I always think I can wear things with tights and I can wear jumpers over the top um, and I just really wanted to make it. So yeah, that's my first kind of work in progress for sewing. The other thing is something that I have got cut out but I haven't started it yet and it's actually a gift for my boyfriend for his birthday. It's not a surprise, so I can share it on the podcast. And it is the Cornell shirt. So I'll pop in a photo somewhere on the screen um, by Elbe Textiles, which is a button down shirt with long sleeves. And it's got a, I think it's called a grandpa collar. Um, and it's the same as this basically. Um, but there are two views. There's a view with like a half placket, so the buttons only go down halfway. And there is another view with a full button stand. So he wants the view with the full button stand. And he chose this really beautiful cotton and linen fabric. Again, this was from Fabric Godmother. Um, I'll link it down below. And it is the sea foam colour and it is just the most beautiful aqua colour. My boyfriend loves this colour. Um, it's his favourite colour and he wanted a shirt in this colour so I did a bit of research and I found a few options and then he chose this one. It is slightly heavier weight, um, it's more of like a winter weight fabric I'd say for shirts, um, so I have warned him. <laughs> I said it's going to be slightly thicker than what you're used to and he's like that's fine I'll just use it as my winter shirt. <laughs> um, he doesn't wear shirts very often. Um, but he really likes this style of shirt without the collar and I think it looks really lovely as well. And it's a unisex pattern, any gender um, can wear it. It's quite oversized, I think I'm making the size of D. Um, it's recommended to have like 30 centimetres of ease. My boyfriend didn't want that much ease on it, so I measured his favourite shirt and did the size slightly bigger than that, um, as it is a slightly thicker fabric. And yeah, it's lovely. I've got it all cut out, um, but I will sew it once I finish my orchard dress. And his birthday isn't until November, like halfway through November. So I've got lots of time. I just like being prepared and I really don't want to rush it. I want to finish it really nicely um, as it's a gift and it's not for me. And I've never sewn him anything before. Um, so yeah, that is my sewing. Um, let me know if you're a sewer and if you don't mind this sewing content in the videos i know not everybody likes watching sewing content um i do i always love knowing what people are sewing and i'd really like to carry on sharing it as well so i'm very briefly i'm aware this has been very long um i'm very briefly going to talk about books um so i just thought i'd talk about two books that i'd read recently um that i really enjoyed so the first one is guard your daughters by Diana Tutton and this is a book published by Persephone Books and they are a British book company, um, a publisher and shop who publish books mostly written by women um, from mostly the early part of the 20th century, um, so like mostly the 30s and 40s um, and 50s and this book was published in the early 50s I believe and they republish them and they're a beautiful company. I've been a really long term, long time a fan of their work and their books. And they recently actually relocated. So they used to be based in London and they're now based in Bath, which is very handy. Um, seeing as my family lived there. So when I went on that trip to Bath, which I was talking about 
and when I went to the Chitta Yarn Story, we also went to Persephone and their new shop. And obviously I had to buy some books because it's very important. <laughs> um, I wanted to support them. I love the work that they do. And this actually I bought earlier on a trip to London. I went to Dawn Books and they had it there. Um, so maybe I'll talk if I manage to read any of the ones I bought on my most recent trip. I'll talk about them next time. This is about a family um, of five and it is set in the early 50s, late 40s, so just after World War II. And yeah, there is five daughters and they live with their parents and their dad is a very famous crime novelist and their mum has is very interesting. And this book is all about their relationship with their parents and their mum and it's really beautiful. It's similar to, in a way, to I Capture a Castle by J.D. Smith, which is one of my favourite books. Um, I've read it a lot. Um, I first read it when I was a young teenager. And the lovely thing about Persephone books is that they have these beautiful end papers. Um, and they all come with like these matching bookmarks. Um, and they're just, yeah, lovely. I really enjoyed this. I know I haven't described it very well, um, but it's mainly focused on the middle daughter and yeah it's just a really lovely book and I it's I love books about family dynamics and like kind of quirky families and this has that but it has this kind of like dark undertone to it as well which I think makes it a bit different and really interesting so yeah would really recommend this if that sounds like something you'd be interested in the other book, talking about quirky families, <laughs> that I, this is the one I'm currently reading, and this is The Light Years by Elizabeth Jane Howard. And I read about this in, I'd never heard of this series before. It's book one in the Cazalet, Cazalet Chronicles. Um, and I read about it in another book and thought, that sounds exactly like my cup of tea. There are five books. They're all quite chunky. <laughs> um, I think this is about just under 530 pages and this is about the Cazalet family um who is fairly wealthy upper middle class family and um it, you kind of follow all the different members of the family so there are the parents and then their three no their four children they've got three sons and one daughter their partners and then their children um and then there also the other people that are kind of involved in their lives. So you get the the perspective switches a lot um, between all these different people in the family and their, the people that they know, so their servants. And it's really good. So this one is begins in 1936. Um, so just before, uh, three years before World War Two, And it kind of, yeah, it covers lots of different things. Um, I'm only about yeah halfway through I'm on page 248 and I'm really really enjoying it it's exactly the kind of thing I enjoy it's historical fiction about a big family and I love reading about that kind of thing and I'm just really really enjoying it um yeah it's just really I'm just loving it um these were actually I thought they were older than they are this was actually originally written or published in 1990 um but yeah they're historical fiction but were published you know now like 30 yeah 31 years ago um but yeah a really good and I'm really enjoying it so yeah that is everything we're coming up to an hour which is a bit mad um I hope you've enjoyed this um let me know what you're currently working on whether it's knitting sewing any other kind of craft I'd love to hear um yeah, and tell me a bit about yourselves. It would be lovely. And if you like reading, please let me know your book recommendations. Do you have any favourites? Um, what kind of things do you enjoy? What have you reading recently? Tell me everything. Um, so yeah, I hopefully see you next time. And yeah, thank you. Bye. <laughs>